The Adventures of Detective Black and Blue. Detectives Black and Blue, in company with Chief Blackfeather of the Canadian Police, plan to leave for Canada to aid the Canadian Police in the capture of a mysterious scar-faced Indian known as the Ghost. But the two detectives take the wrong train. The present scene is at Clear Lake, a lonely flag station over the border in Canada. Black and Blue have just been put off the Winnipeg Flyer. The time is three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> The Adventures of Detectives Black and Blue. There she goes. Just two red lights disappearing down the track. Yeah. And here we are, just two... Well, what are we, anyway? Yeah, and where are we? A fine railroad this is. Put us off way out here in the country. In the middle of the night, too. Yeah, and boy, you can tell you're in Canada, all right. Listen to that wind howling. We should ought to bring suit against the Canadian Pacific. Well, they can't help it if the wind is blowing. Oh, no, but they put us off the train. Well, I don't know, Black. They ain't to blame for us getting on the wrong train, I guess. And not a light in sight. I don't suppose there's even any houses around here. Well, there's a light down there on the platform, right under that big green signal up in the air there. Gee, maybe there's a a operator or somebody around. Let's go and see. Well, you'll have to help me carry some of this stuff. All right, go ahead. I'll take the snowshoes. Gee, what a lonesome place. I bet you could hear frogs singing out there if it was summertime, but I don't suppose it ever gets summertime here. Yeah. There's some fella in there. I can see him through the bay window. Push open the door. Gee, it's warm in here. That's one thing. Shut the door, Blue. Shut it. Well, I'll tell you, Black. I I think the first thing is to ask the operator or station agent how how we can get out of here. Go ahead. Talk to him through that little window. Excuse me, mister. Hello. You're the two that got off number one, ain't you? Yes, we are. And we're kind of up against it, too. You see, we got on the wrong train at Duluth. Uh, It was the wrong train, you see. What's your destination? Why, we was going to Eagle River, Canada. That's the first place we was going. Let me see your ticket, will you? Sure, here they are. Both of them. Mm, Yeah. Well, you're a long way off from where you two want to go. You see, the train you was on goes to Winnipeg. The train you should have got on goes to North Dakota via Port Hell, uh, that way. Yeah, and the worst of it is a friend of ours is on the other train, too. Well, that's too bad. Well, the conductor told us we could catch a train here tomorrow morning sometime that would take us back to Thief River Falls. And then we could catch some other train that goes to Eagle River. Yeah, number four comes through here in the morning at 8.17. That's about, oh, let's see, it's 3.15 now. Well, you'll have five hours here. You can sleep on the benches there if you want to. Ain't they no hotel here? Hotel? <laughs> there ain't nothing or nobody but me. Gee, we'll be a whole day late now getting into Re- Eagle River. Say, wait a minute. I got an idea. I might save you some time. Number seven, the Vancouver Mail. He was... 
She was due out of here at 2.53, but they got laid out a little on account of the hot box at Rima. Now, you just wait. If I can catch them on the wire before they pull out of Cloverdale Junction, they might stop here and pick you up. Say, I'll see if I can make it. Gee, Blue, if he can get this train to stop and pick us up, that'll help some anyway. a tough break that we got on the wrong train, that's sure. No telling where Chief Blackfeather is now. Mm -hmm. We know where he is, all right, but what good does that do us? He's on the Canadian Pacific Limited going away from us 60 miles an hour. Hey, I tell you what we could do, Black. Maybe we can send a message to him on the other train. Yeah, we might do that when the agent fella gets through telegraphing. Let's ask him. Uh Uh-huh. Here's Cloverdale now, boys. Wait just a minute. I'll see what he says. Well, boys, you're in luck. Number seven will stop here just long enough for you to get on board. Better get out on the platform so you won't delay them. They're late now. Gee, mister, that's sure fine. Uh, Will we buy our tickets from you? No, you'll have to buy them from the conductor on the train. I don't have any tickets here at night. The day man keeps them locked up. Number seven is the Vancouver Mail, and she generally goes through here like a shot out of a gun. Well, say, where do we go on this train? Why, she'll take you right into Eagle River. But they go a different way than the way you was going. They're due in there tomorrow night sometime. Well, we, we we just can't thank you enough, mister. Oh, that's all right. Of course, I'd have been glad to have you stay here the rest of the night with me. Because it gets kind of lonesome, unless I have train orders for freight trains that take the side in here or something like that. This Vancouver mail. Uh, she's a fast one, huh? I'll say she is. She carries mail for the Orient, you know. China and Japan and all them places. They hit them up because they got to make connections with the steamers at Vancouver. Gosh, I didn't know people was writing letters to China by the train load. Mm, oh, yes. She carries registered mail and a lot of valuable express. Do you think we should order to get out on the platform now? Well, you might just as well get your baggage out there already. The first pull, pull and hold will be about 100 feet from the station here, and you can carry your stuff down there, and then you'll be all set when she pulls in. They don't like to stop long. Well, we'll do that. Here, you hold the door open, Black, and I'll take part of this stuff. Get back in there. Oh, gee. Oh, Robert. Stick him up. Come on in, boys. Keep these two fellas covered. Hey, you in the office there. Stick up your hands. Hey, this looks Reach like a holdup, huh? Over there. Yeah, it is a holdup. Not a moving picture either. And don't make no mistake, because I might make a mistake with this gun, and you'll be drinking your coffee in the morning, sitting on a cloud. Well, I ain't craving no bullets. Don't worry about me moving. I only carry about $50 here. We're not out for chicken feed. What time was the Vancouver mail due through here? 2.53, ain't she? Yes, she is, but she's late tonight. Oh, where is she now? She pulled out of Cloverdale just a few minutes ago. I was just talking to the operator. Yeah, where's Cloverdale? It's the next station east of here. Well, keep away from that telegraph key. Now, listen. You've got that board set for clear, haven't you? Yes, it is. Yeah, I know it. It shows green outside. Well, you throw it a red, you understand? Well, I can do it, but it ain't necessary. What do you mean? Don't pull no funny stuff with me now. I told you, you don't need to worry about me, mister. I've been held up before. Yeah, and this ain't the first mail train we've held up. And you wouldn't be the first station agent I've drilled either, get that? Yes, sir. But number seven's going to stop here anyway to pick up these two passengers. She don't usually stop. There you go. You're Sam standing there. It's you I'm talking to. Yes, sir. Is that so what he said? Are you waiting to get on that train? Yes, sir. Yeah, mister. The operator, he just told him to stop. Uh, Gee, mister, uh, can't you let us hide out back at the station somewhere? We don't want to be a no hold up because they might be shooting and et cetera. Uh, You suppose you could let us go just as a favor? Shut up! Yes, sir. Hey, you two. Polly and Jim. You two guys go on past the depot a little ways, about where the engine will stop. Cover the engineer and fireman. You two other fellas line up ready for the mail car. Me and Slim will take care of the conductors and the other trainmen. When she stops, let go with your rods alongside of the train and scare daylight out of all of them. Shoot them up. Nothing like noise to scare passengers. Say, mister. What do you want? Uh, could I take my hand down for a minute to scratch my nose? Shut up, or I'll scratch with a bullet out of his forty-five. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, my nose is tickling pretty bad, sir. Uh, Blue, uh, this is terrible. Shut up, Black. Hey, Slim, here's an idea. Take these two sappy-looking guys outside with you. Make them stand alongside of the mail car. 
And if there's any shooting starts, you can use them for a screen. Just jump behind him. Oh, say, Mr. Bennett, that ain't fair. We ain't robbers. We might get shot. You might, huh? Well, what's more, you probably will. Come on out of there. If there's any shooting from the mail cars, we'll let them plug you, too. Come on, boys. This is going to be sweet picking. Oh, Mr. Robert, do we have to go? I, I don't want to go out there. You don't, huh? Ouch, don't kick me no more. I'll go. I'll go. On your toes now. Make it snappy, guys. Here she is. <laughs> to listen to the next episode in the thrilling and amusing adventures of Detectives Black and Blue over this station. This is an Earnshaw Morgan production. Thank you.